Novak Djokovic won the 2023 US Open to win his 24th Grand Slam. In this video, we're going to look at the mindset behind how he did it. My name is Bryce Wilson, and I'm a mental performance coach who coaches athletes how to develop and win his mindset. To understand his mindset, we're going to look at his post-match interviews, where he basically tells us what he was thinking before and during the match. I'm really living my childhood dream. This is the part that's more important than any trophy or accolade. Is he doing the thing that he always wanted to do as a kid? Does he enjoy what he does? I made a video about his story, which you can check out here, but Novak almost quit early on in his career because he was so focused on trophies and being number one. And although he was close, at the time he hadn't won anything yet. After one heartbreaking match, he told his coach that he might quit. But his coach asked him a simple question. Do you still love playing tennis? Do you still love it as much as you did when you were a kid? Novak realized he still loved the sport and decided to tap into that love rather than winning. And that's what eventually led to him winning trophy after trophy. Coming from very difficult circumstances and adversities, a couple of wars in our country. Novak grew up in the middle of the Serbian war. He had to learn how to sleep through bombings as a child. But instead of looking at it as a disadvantage and something that would hold him back, because let's be honest, for the rest of his life, he could have said that I grew up during a war. That's why I'm extra fearful, lazy, or can't function in society. But instead he took that as an advantage to push himself to provide for his family so that he wouldn't be in that situation again to remind him to always be grateful for the life he has and to motivate him to bring joy to Serbians. No one has played tennis in my family before. You think someone like this grew up in a tennis family? Like maybe his grandma is Billie Jean King or something. You think he had to have some type of head start, like insane talent or a bunch of money. But no, although there might have been some luck involved, he grew up in war, couldn't afford tennis lessons, and had parents who knew nothing about tennis. Yet he still became a tennis goat. So there's no excuses. It's amazing what passion and hard work can do. My team, everyone that is there, this is your trophy as much as is mine. A champion must be humble. He got there because of his team's hard work just as much as his own. Cultivate a solid team around you and give them their props. Because if you think that you got to the top by yourself, not only will your team leave you and they'll be forced to realize that you didn't, but your ego will be so inflated that you probably won't make it back to the top again. I wanted to become the best player in the world and win Wimbledon trophy. That was the only thing I wanted. I never imagined that I would be here standing with you talking about 24 slams. You might think that someone with 24 grand slams had been envisioning this and had some master plan for years. But he said he got into the sport with only two objectives to become number one and to win Wimbledon. Yet he broke the record for the most time spent number one and won Wimbledon seven times. The reason he was able to do this is because he was so focused on the process. He wasn't worried about winning dozens of Grand Slams or breaking a record. He was just focused on doing his best in the next match, winning his next match. And if you do that every time, you might end up with 24 Grand Slams. I want to congratulate you for a fantastic uh, tournament. You might notice this as a trend. Every great champion gives credit to their opponent. Because as I say, if you don't have sportsmanship, you don't respect your opponent. And if you don't respect your opponent, you won't try your best or give your best effort, which increases your chances of losing. Please don't get this in the wrong way. Happy anniversary to your wife, I'm sorry. That's savage. Is he wrong for that? I mean, you either don't mention it and you're insensitive, or you mention it and you're savage. I guess it's a lose-lose either way. You see, there's difficulties to being a champion. Kobe was close friend. He was always there for any kind of counsel, advice, any kind of support. Notice that when giving a tribute to Kobe Bryant, he didn't talk about how much trophies he won. He only talked about how good of a person he was and how much he inspired him. So keep that in mind. All the trophies and accolades will go away. But how you inspired others and how good of a person you were is what people will remember most. I really did my best not to allow the importance of the moment and what's on the line get to my head I and mean, treat this match really as any other match. This is crucial for performing in pressure situations. You have to treat it like any other match. He wasn't thinking about how this was a US Open final or that it was his 24th Grand Slam. He just treated it like it was another match and that's how he was able to perform so well under pressure. My team, my family knew the last 24 hours don't speak to me about the history or what's on the line. But he is human, so although he tried to avoid hyping up the moment, he still did do things like tell his team not to make a big deal out of the moment and he probably didn't go on social media much either. So if you're an athlete and checking social media to see what people say before and after your match, if a tennis goat doesn't do it, then you probably shouldn't do it either. We're human, so it's almost impossible to not let certain things that people say affect us in some way. When it mattered, I put one ball in the play more than he did, and that was enough. Your sport may not be tennis, but the takeaway from this is to do the small things right, and over time, it'll add up. Winning the match and then hugging my daughter and son, my wife, parents, you know, closest people, that was what I wanted to do first, to share these emotions with them. Always remember what's important. After making history, his immediate thought wasn't to think about how great he was, but to celebrate with his team and the people who supported him. There's always something that I'm trying to add so that I can up my performance in my game, at least for a few percent. This is a major reason why he's at the top. How many athletes would get to the top and then try to do the same things over and over because that's what worked the first time. And that's the exact reason why they'll soon fall from the top. If you want to reach the top and stay there, you have to continue to adapt and improve things constantly. As he said, even just to make a small percentage difference. But at the highest level, that one to 2% difference could be the difference between winning a trophy and not. And if you find a formula that works, it's not a guarantee and actually most likely it's not gonna work the next year. And here he's just proving my point. 
Just because it worked once doesn't mean it'll work twice, especially in sports when you're playing against competitors who will watch film and study you to crack a code on what worked for you the previous year. You need to reinvent yourself. I like that word, reinvent. It's actually a chapter in my book if you want to check it out. But if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. So always keep improving. Keep the playfulness and, and passion for the sport. I love that word too, playfulness. Here's the goat of tennis and he's talking about playfulness, which is a word you typically use to describe children. But that's the key. If you can be a grown adult with money and stakes on the line and still maintain that childlike playfulness and enjoy it just as much as a child would, then you'll be able to maintain that work ethic and continue to compete for years on end. <laughs> there is a little regret that I didn't win the Wimbledon finals, but look, in the end of the day, I, you know, I have so much more to be happier and content with than actually to regret something. Earlier this year, he lost the Wimbledon final to Carlos Alcaraz, and it would have been easier to let that loss eat him up and spend his energy regretting losing. But you can either focus on the bad or focus on the good. The good was that it was a learning experience and there were still other tennis matches to play. So it's interesting that even as a GOAT, he has to remind himself the same things that we have to remind ourselves. How long do I want to keep going? I do have these questions in my head, of course. Knowing that I play at a, such a high level still and I win the biggest tournaments in a sport, I don't want to leave this sport if I'm still, you know, if I'm still playing the way I'm playing. There is one way to benefit from regret though. Regretting something in the past only negatively affects you, but you can actually use the thought of a future regret to motivate you. Novak knows that decades from now, if he quit prematurely while he was still at the top of his game, he would have always wondered how far he could have gone. So to avoid that regret, he's gonna keep playing until someone knocks him off his throne. I was very much aware that I'm playing an opponent that pretty much kicked my butt two years ago in the finals here. There's two ways you can view this. Either get scared that you have to play an opponent that you recently lost to, or get motivated. Get excited that you have a chance to redeem yourself. And it looks like he chose the latter. The history of this sport always drives me. Always try to figure out what motivates you. And that might change year to year or season to season. At this point in his career, it looks like history is what motivates him. Because he's at the point where literally every match he plays is making history. But find what motivates you. So that's why I think he won the US Open. Why do you think he won?